And now uh, we're getting into this uh, Cinderella archetype um, uh, from the first Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, we got Pumpkin Carriage, Iron Hands, uh, Iron Knight. Uh, 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 no, 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 not you. Glyph, the Phantom Bird, then her, then uh, the Golden Castle of Stromberg, which in you know in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, this card is actually going to be a one-card FTK. I'm gonna get a little into that later. Glass Slippers and uh, Iron Cage. That, those are all the cards in the archetype. So going all the way back to Cinderella, um, when she's normal or special summon, special summon pumpkin carriage from your hand or deck, and then if a Golden Castle of Stromberg is in the field zone, you can equip one Glass Slippers from your deck to this card. So pretty much um, everything. So every card in this deck is going to re revolve around the, the, the field spell. It's, it's one of those field spell reliant decks. But you know this deck. Uh, she she already lets you summon out another monster from your deck when she's normal or special summoned. So she's like a free link too by herself, which it's pretty cool. And then although she only has 300 attack, um, you know, when this card uh, inflicts battle damage to your opponent by a direct attack, you can target one glass slippers equipped to this card and whatever face a monster on the field, and then equip that glass slippers to that monster. And so um, we're gonna go into a little into glass slippers later. But first, we're going to go into Pumpkin Carriage. And so Cinderella, you control, can attack directly. And so that kind of helps her get her effect off. Even though she only has 300, you know, she, she, she can equip Glass Slippers to another monster. And so your opponent cannot target Golden Castle of Stromberg. You, you control with, with uh, card effects. Also, it cannot be destroyed by card effects. So this might be a card you might want to keep on the field. Although its weak stats are going to be hard to, to make it stay on the field. But... Um, I'm, I'm sure you can make something work if th th this is definitely an interesting archetype and I, I do feel like you can make something work um, at least it's an archetype that can stand on its own two feet is, is what I can tell you based on what I've seen from the support so far and so next we have Iron Hands um, Hans or whatever when this card is summoned so normal or special summoned you know I, I think they should just hide that same text for Cinderella she it should just said well, like when this card is summoned like like, no need to specify normal or special summon. I mean, what other type of summon can you do? Um, I mean, Pendulum Summon still counts as a special summon, so, yeah. So, if this card is summoned, you can special summon one Iron Knight from your deck. Also, if Golden Castle of Stromberg is not on the field zone, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of this turn. So, pretty much, if you want him to be good, use the field spell. And you'll see, once we get to the field spell, that it's pretty much just going to synergize because the field spell just gets to bring him out for free pretty much at the cost of your normal summon well not not entirely free but other than that like the only cost is your normal summon so you're summoning him from your deck for free and then you can special summon iron knight for free after summoning him and since him and iron knight are both warriors guess what that means free ice hold and you know what free ice hold means or isoldi or however you pronounce your name it means free wombo combos so one field spell gets you a free ice hold gets you a free wombo combo first turn so definitely pretty cool and this his second effect um, is that if Golden Castle of Stromberg is on the field zone this card gains a thousand attack for each Iron Knight you control so he'd be a 2200 beater um, if you you know field spell summon him out and then summon out uh, Iron Knight he'd be a 2200 beater that's pretty cool next we have Iron Knight and they're both level 4 warriors they are both level 4 warriors, so you can go into some Exceed Summons as well. If you control Iron Hans, this card loses 1,000 attack. So already, um, it kind of just makes up for that attack boost that Iron Hans gets. So I guess you put the armor onto, you know, he's putting the armor on. Iron Hans is putting the armor on, I guess. And so if this card is destroyed by battle, if this card on the field is sent from the graveyard, or sent uh, to the graveyard by a card effect, you can add one Iron Hans from your deck to your hand. So he kind of does... Um, he does a uh, float a little bit because he can, you know, search another copy of, of his searcher, which is kind of cool. So if you draw him and you don't have the field spell and you don't have Iron Hands, you can set him, you know, probably bait out your opponent or something and then search yourself a copy of Iron Hands and, you know, get more wobbles going. And if Golden of if Golden Castle Stromberg is on the field spell zone, so when, so when he's destroyed, you can add any warrior monster from your deck to your hand instead. And you're going to use this effect of Iron Knight once per turn. So he's he's pretty cool 
in uh, letting you, you know, get, uh, you know, any warrior from your deck or even iron hands from your deck when he's destroyed. And it doesn't have to be uh, from, you know, it doesn't have to be for your opponent's card effect. It's just a destroy by battle or if it's sent from field to graveyard by a card effect. The problem is, is that it's only when it's sent from field to graveyard. So uh, maybe, you, you know, you could like barrage it or something. But for the most part, I don't think you're going to be doing a lot with this effect unless this card gets it in or unless this deck gets an in archetype card that destroys its own monsters on the field for a benefit, you know, not just for free. Next, we have Glyph the Phantom Bird. He uh, discards himself to uh, add Golden Class of Stromberg. But, you know, if not, you can normal or special summon him and, you know, pop a Spell Chop card. You know, you target a Spell Chop card and then you get to destroy it. So, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, just, just just a good searcher. You know, like, it's just a good good card all together. You know, it's just a card you should probably play two or three of if you're, if you're playing this deck, you know. Either he... Adds Godel Castle Stromberg, or he pops a spell chop card. Just uh, you know, be careful with uh, called by the grave because if you discard him and then they called by the grave, you his effect is going to be negated. So just be you know, be wary if your opponent is playing that card. Just just be aware of back row in general. And so uh, next we have Hexy Trude. I guess this is the whole um, the bad guy from Cinderella. I don't know. I haven't seen Cinderella in so long. I, I forgot. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so if Golden Castle Schomburg is in the field zone, you can normal summon this card without tributing. And it's good that it says normal summon. I remember watching a DP Yu-Gi-Oh! video that, where it says she should have been able to special summon herself. I'm, I'm like, no, because I'll be way too broken. <laughs> because Golden Castle Schomburg, I might as well just show you it now. Um, you, you get to special, like, it says during your main phase, you can special one monster that sp specifically lists this card um, in its text from your deck. And then doing that, you cannot normal summon or set to turn you activate this effect. And so, pretty much, Golden Castle Stromberg lets you summon out Cinderella or lets you summon out Iron Hands. And then both Cinderella or Iron Hands would bring you another monster to your field. And so, um, having you know not only that, you know, especially with Iron Hands getting you into a free Isold and then Isold going out into its own crazy combos, and then all on top of that, being able to special summon her. Simply because Golden Castle Stromberg is, is on the field, that would, that would be way too broken, way too much of a power play. So, um, I think it's nice. I think it's balanced that she normal summons, but it it, it kind of makes her you know question whether she's you should play her in the deck or not. Because now it's like, do I special summon from the deck, or do I normal summon her? You're never gonna want to normal summon her unless you've ran out of resources. So. I guess, you know, in a way, it does kind of make her useless that she normal summons herself when the field spell is on the field. But, um, again, it's it's all fair and balanced. So once per turn, if Golden Castle Stromberg is in the field zone, you can target one card on the field, destroy it. And if you do, this card can make up to two, mon two attacks on monsters during each battle phase's turn. And then when this card destroys on opponent's monster by battle, you can target one face on monster control against 400 attacks. So I think it's nice that she doesn't have to target herself. And I also think it's nice that she gets a little, um, you know, benefit from um, norm summoning her. So, like, you know, you norm summon her if, you know, field spells on the field, you get to norm summon her without tributing. And then if the field spells on the field, you get to pop a card, any card on the field. Um, so I guess if you have Iron Knight on the field, um, you could search yourself in Iron Hands. But I don't know why you would. Summon her just to pop your Iron Knight, just to search your Iron Hands when Golden Castle Stromberg can do all of that for you. Uh, just summon out Iron Hands from the deck for free. So, uh, again, just as I said before, um, it, 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 she, she's questionable whether you should actually run her or not, but um, it's definitely something, you know, to consider. Then Golden Castle Stronger, I pretty much already taught, uh, delved into this card, but really... Um, there is a maintenance cost to this card, so once per turn during your standby phase, you must banish 10 cards from the top of your deck face down. It's not optional, or this card is destroyed. So pretty much, as long as this card's on the field, you're banishing 10 cards from the top of your deck until you can't anymore, and then this card is destroyed. That's pretty much how, you know, mandatory maintenance cost effects work. And so, um, yeah, I already went over the special summon from your deck, but when a opponent's monster declares an attack, Destroy the attacking monster. This, this, this card doesn't target. All right. So just know this is this is a field spell. This is on the field. 
so both players should be well knowledge on every single effect on this card just to make sure that your opponent isn't like the person playing this isn't doing anything too crazy and then uh, if you do inflict damage to your opponent equal to half the, uh, the attack that monster had on the field so the thing about this card is that on like during during the player's turn the player using it it's all fine and dandy at, at least the first turn you activate it but during your opponent's turn this card's going to be a target because they're they're not going to be able unless you're playing like gemini ftk or magical explosion ftk or something like that or even exodia ftk or chain burn ftk all decks that only people with small dicks play um <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding but um it, it, it's stuff that you know for the most part, it's, it's going to be a card that you, you want to get rid of because, like, why, like, you're, you're not only going to get, you know, a big board uh, if you can, like, summon out Iron Hands into Iron Knight and then go into Ice Hold and then go into more crazy Link monsters, but, you know, you can also stop me from attacking, and it's not even a once per turn. It's just when an opponent monster declares an attack, destroy the attacking monster and then inflict damage. So pretty much your opponent just isn't, isn't attacking at all. This is like a source of revealing light. <laughs> in freaking disguise it's like it's not that you can't attack it's that you don't want to attack i mean you can summon out something like a beals but like come on so yeah th this card's gonna be like a real big target for your opponent so just make sure that if you actually want to keep it on the field try to have something that can kind of manipulate uh you know either stop this card from being destroyed or that can like or you like you have like a negate on board you know or something like that so yeah, next we have Glass Slippers. Um, so if it's equipped to a Fairy Monster, it gains a thousand attack, and then if not, um, the equipped monster can attack, and also it loses a thousand attack. So let's go all the way back to Cinderella. To, to Cinderella. There you go. And so she, so she, not only can she summon out. Um, pumpkin carriage and that's that and that's regardless of whether the field spell is uh on the field or not but she can also equip glass slippers from your deck to herself and so that will make her a nice whopping 1300 and then after she inflicts damage by a direct attack pretty much she should be able to attack directly because you should have pumpkin carriage on the field um she gets to equip um glass slippers to maybe a, a monster your opponent controls um, and that monster loses a thousand attack and also can't attack, but she's going to be back down to um, 300 attack. And so it's, it's just it's just a big gimmick, but um, it, I, I guess it's cool, you know, having 1300 directly to the face. And then um, if this card is sent to the graver because the equipped monster was destroyed, you can target one Cinderella you control, equip that target with this card. So um, if you equip it to your opponent's monster, then your opponent's monster gets destroyed. You can equip it back to your Cinderella. So um, you, but you know, it's only once per turn. So um, it, it's it's like an okay combo, but pretty much um, I don't think you're going to be keeping Cinderella and, and Pumpkin Carriage on the field for long. I think if you're playing this deck, you're kind of uh, focusing on you know Link summoning a little more than you would uh, the whole Cinderella Wombo combo. So. And the last card from the archetype is uh, Iron Cage. And so when this card is activated, send a monster you control to the graveyard. Or if Golden Castle Stromberg is in, is in the field zone, you can send one monster your opponent controls to the graveyard instead. And so um, pretty much if, if, if you activate this without the field spell on the field, I think you are the dumbest person in the world. But there is, there might be a small, a very, very, very small justification to activating this card without the field spell and uh let's see why once per turn during your opponent's standby phase you can target one monster in the graveyard that was sent there by this card's effect destroy this card and if you do special summon that monster so this card has to stay on the field so let, let's say you target you send your own monster to the graveyard this card has to stay on the field until your very next turn just to summon back that monster that that you sent to the graveyard and so, I mean, I guess, you know, targeting your opponent's monster, it's a bit far-fetched if you think, you know, you get to Monster Reborn them. Um, but, you know, at, at the very least, you're getting, you know, freaking removal for free, pretty much. It's like it's like free free removal. Um, so it's like there, there's no reason not to activate it or even not to play it. But um, if you use it on your own monster, it's kind of useless. Um, I guess you could, like, use this on C Cinderella just to make sure she's not attacked. But at the same time, it's like, 
you, the field spell stops your opponent from attacking in general. So if you have a way to, so if you summon out Cinderella and Pumpkin Carriage and have the field spell, your opponent pretty much isn't attacking at all unless they could they could summon a monster that can't be destroyed by card effects. So, yeah, it, it's it's a pretty cool archetype. I don't even know if you can even consider it an archetype, but I guess deck. Uh, so. I I wouldn't even know what to call this archetype. People are calling it like fairy tale archetype, but I don't I don't know. I don't, I don't really like that name, so I don't really know what to call it. Um, so yeah. Uh, Litmus Doom Swordsman and Litmus Doom Ritual. It's it's nothing special. It's unaffected by trap effects. Um, gains three thousand attack and defense while trap cards on the field. Can't be destroyed by battle. And a distant virtual summon card is his own control is destroyed by an opponent's card. You could target one trap card in, e in either player's graveyard to set it to your spawn trap card zone. Uh, like, yeah, it's nothing special. It does ritual things, and then if this card's in your graveyard, you can target one Litmus Doom Swordsman in your graveyard, but shuffle both this card and that target into the deck, and then draw one card. So, not really anything special there either. Uh, and then Living Fossil. Um, I guess this is going to be the last card I'm talking about in this video. Um, so you activate this card by targeting one level four lower monster in your graveyard, so summon it and equip it with this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. And so the very obvious way to get around this is to use that monster for an exceed summon. But you know exceeds aren't you know in and hip anymore. You know it's all about link monsters now. So that's probably why they made this card now. And so when this card leaves the field, also banish that monster. The equipped monster loses a, a thousand attack and defense, also has its effects negated. So there's no real cost to activating this card, which I which I like, because sometimes you know cards have all these conditions, and then there's still a cost to them, like pay 500 life points. Like it's like why why play Twister over MST? It, it's re it's really you know that type of thing. But um, I like when I, I think you should use this card in a deck like maybe Dinosaurs or Shiranui, uh, where you can uh get plus off of your monster banishing so if you activate this you special them back like a giant rex from the graveyard and then you know use that giant rex for like a link summon giant rex is going to special summon itself back because it just got banished um and then and then it's going to go back to full attack um in Chirinoi, you can probably get like an effect off of your monster banishing like probably bring like a zombie back or something but i think in dinosaurs this is going to be the best card um other than that I don't really see you playing this card in too many other decks. I mean, it could be another Isold target. So if you're playing Isold, um, and you know, there's all there's always Divine Sword, Phoenix Blade, and yes, there's the Bamboo Swords. But if you need something else, cheaper option maybe because the Bamboo Swords have kind of gotten bamboozled in price. Um, <laughs> uh, this is definitely a card that, uh, wouldn't be the worst option in the world because it's just, it's just free, free, uh, free monsters. I mean, especially if you're playing Gokis, um, you don't really care about your Gokis effects on the field, but you know, once they're sent to the graveyard, they kind of get that effect to search. So yeah, um, definitely something that, uh, I feel like we might see more of in the future, but you know, don't be surprised if you don't really see it. It's definitely going to be a budget option for players, uh, unless they decide to make it a secret rare in the set, but, I mean, in Battle's Legend, but I guess it's, it's just an okay card. So, um, that's all for this video. Um, so I'm gonna just record these videos in a row. So, uh, if you decide to leave here, hope you guys enjoyed. This was a uh, TCG Nisha here, signing out.